Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Marvel 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Now today we are taking a look at Black Widow from her solo movie. I personally enjoyed the film. I know not everyone did. Recently someone commented, Justin, you've got terrible taste in movies. First of all, ouch. Second of all, I like what I like. You like what you like. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I dig it. A Black Widow logo on one side, this Black Widow hourglass symbol in a nice vibrant red on the other, plus an open window showcasing an image of ScarJo as Black Widow underneath. On the side of the box, another Black Widow symbol. On the back, a bunch of warnings and legal info. Now this top cover does slide off. To reveal that piece of artwork in its entirety, honestly, this looks awesome. I would have been perfectly happy if this was the box art, but having the Black Widow symbol kind of works as well. On the side of the box, Black Widow. On the back, an almost full body shot of the actual figure. Speaking of the actual figure, if we flip open the top cover, oh yes, an open window for a sneak preview. But we're not here for sneak previews, we're here to get the figure herself out here. Now, I've been really excited for this Black Widow. Hot Toys have made a bunch of changes to the way they actually make Black Widow figures over the years. And I reckon this one stands the best chance of the lot of being the best one ever. But don't worry, we will find out throughout the course of the video. First in hand impressions, pretty darn good. What we are going to do now though is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box, take a closer look at everything she comes with. Starting off with the display base first, it's the usual Hot Toys Marvel Fair. Hexagonal, Black Widow up top, love the glossy red Black Widow logo, up front Black Widow, then up top a regular crotch grabber. The special edition bonus is Taskmaster's shield. We've seen this before with the uh, Taskmaster, it's the same exact sculpt, I like the way it looked originally and I like it here too. Although this one is way filthier, there's dirt and grime in the crevices, there's this black speckling up on top. Which one do I prefer? I don't know, I'm leaning towards the new one but the silver scratches on the original are really good too. Now if you're wondering, okay, can Black Widow actually hold this seeing as though there's no handle? Well yes, Hot Toys have integrated magnets into her forearm, so you can simply pop the shield on and it's pretty secure. You do get multiple different versions of her batons, these are the smallest of the bunch, the grip's a little bit textured, the top part is done in a bright silver, then down below ball joints, spoiler alert, these plug into her backpack. At least I think it's a backpack, it's on her back, it's attached with straps and those pieces store in it, so yeah, for now we'll stick with backpack. She also comes with a medium sized bat on, the handle is done in the same style as those ones with a teeny tiny blue button. You've also got some yellow paint for the linkages, then up top pretty sure that's a taser. You can remove it though if you decide, oh I don't want a taser, I want her just to thwack someone. Well you can pop this one on, it's a little bit flatter. But that's not all, you also get a third set. This one is even longer and it's fully articulated in both directions. So when it comes to posing you can have this kind of mid-flight or you can have it curved around an enemy, totally up to you. Plus you've got the shiny silver serrated sickle. This one is also removable so you can pop on the taser or the flat one. Options are always a good thing. In case you were wondering, the articulated ones are my favourite, I just think they're a little bit more dynamic. Now you also get some pistols, of course you do, it's Black Widow. You get two of these little guys and yes the slide is movable, it's on a spring loaded mechanism. You can remove the magazine with some painted bullet detail. And these are the ones that go in her holsters, whereas this one, it 
can't. I'm not exactly sure why she comes with this one, but the sight is a nice metallic red. It's got a laser pointer down below, and once again the magazine is removable, with painted bullet detail up on top. It is a completely different design of pistol. I prefer the look of this one. I just wish we got two of them. Now that I think about it, maybe that was Dracov's gun from the end of the movie, but it's been a while since I've seen the film. My memory is a little foggy. She does come with a full array of hands, and you get pairs. It's not like Hot Toys have been stingy this time. Oh no, they've given you the full gamut. I'm really happy. I like the texture for the gloves. They're slightly wrinkled on the palm and on the outside. The fingers are nicely painted as well, plus there's some metallic pearlescent nail polish. That's a detail that I don't think I've seen from Hot Toys in a while. What we are going to do now though is get Black Widow herself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. My big takeaway at this point in the video is the B word. Proportions! Hot Toys, you all nailed it. Now the body? You might be thinking, oh, why is it so good? It's borrowed from the Endgame one. No, no, no. You'll see when we get to the comparisons, it's not the same body at all. Her shoulders are broader. Her waist is slightly narrower. The way they've done the legs coming into the boots, it just looks a little cleaner. Which makes for what is, in my opinion, the most realistic Hot Toys female body ever ever. They've had this stigma of kind of looking a little bit Barbie slash doll-like, especially with the rooted hair, but they ditched the rooted hair, they've dialed in the proportions, and she looks all the better for it. When it comes to the outfit, love the colours, that gold's a nice splash, a little bit of a pop in the display, then the head sculpt up on top, even from a distance, looks like ScarJo. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. Some people were hoping, oh yes, this is going to be the best Black Widow head sculpt ever. And the prototype pictures looked really, really promising. The final blogger pictures, not so much, and in hand, she's really good. But is she better than the endgame head sculpt? No, unfortunately, I don't think so. I still think the Endgame head sculpt is the best ever. Now, the skin texture is there. She's got the freckles and the moles. I like the expression, and I love the hair. You've got a bunch of strands hanging along the front, plus the braids around the back. They're nicely sculpted. They're slightly rubbery, and they're well painted, but I don't know what to tell you. I just like this one a little bit better. And if you're in the same boat and you have that one and you're thinking about swapping the head sculpt onto this body, good news my friend, it's compatible and the skin tone between the neck and the head sculpt matches beautifully. Now she is potentially a little bit redder in the cheeks, but for the most part I would have no problem whatsoever displaying this head sculpt on this body. Now the rubbery neck does have some skin texture painted on, some musculature sculpted in, and the best part is it allows for a ton of articulation. More on that a little bit later. If you are wondering though, oh okay, you've tried the old head sculpt on the new body, what about vice versa? Head swaps are so much fun. Yes, it's compatible, new head sculpt, old body. I still prefer the old head sculpt on the end game body, but overall skin tone matches beautifully, and the hair does nicely slot in between the batons. No compatibility issues whatsoever. Do let me know, number one, which head sculpt you prefer, and number two, which head sculpt and body combo is your favourite. Okay, back to stock, we've had enough fun, moving on to the body. I like the proportions, like we discussed earlier, she looks suitably realistic. This zipper is fixed, so no unzipping. I'm perfectly fine with that, I prefer it to look accurate to the movie anyway. She does have this rubbery harness up top that the batons are plugged into, they are actually on ball joints. You also have some armour plating on her shoulders, they're a little bit flexible when it comes to posing. Speaking of flexible, oh yes, all of this sort of textured fabric is spandex. There is some rubbery material here, Hot Toys tends to like to use that, but on the inside of the arms, spandex. These pieces on the front, spandex. Coming down to the legs, you guessed it, more spandex. That makes me really happy. That means that you should hopefully get maximum range of motion. 
we will test out articulation later on. You've also got multiple lighter grey stripes, some black sections and some pops of red. We can't forget the gold though. Classic Black Widow, finally it's a nice pop of colour, especially down here on the belt with that bright red Black Widow symbol. Coming down to the legs, there's a decent shape to them and not a ton of padding. This actually all feels like the base body, which is a good thing, once again nothing to get in your way when it comes to posing. She also has these straps on her thighs for the holsters that the pistols can slot into some more spandex, and of course, a bunch more fully textured robbery plastic. You do have some knee pads, but they're not separate pieces, they're fused to the suit. Then coming down to the boots, a split-cut boot design, finally. I've been asking for this for years for Black Widow. They decided, well, this is the last time we're going to get to make a Black Widow, potentially, so now's the time, let's get it done. I like the look, it does look relatively seamless, you wouldn't honestly be able to tell from the side, from the front, maybe a little. But unfortunately, they haven't used a double ball peg, they've used a hinge and swivel. You'll see why that's unfortunate when we discuss it in the pros and cons. On the underside though, some sculpted in dread, a little bit of dry brushing on the surface and underneath for a touch of subtle weathering. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the new Black Widow on the left and the Endgame version on the right. The new one is ever so slightly taller. She's also using a different body with much more defined shoulders. No, it's not the shoulder pads that's making the difference. The Endgame version had shoulder pads as well. It's just that the proportions are slightly tweaked and I think they look way better with the new one. She's got a slimmer waist, I dig the way the legs transition from the hips all the way down to the boots. It's going to be up to you to decide which look you prefer, but for me, just based on the look and the realism of the body alone, I've got to go with the new one. When it comes to the head sculpt though, oh that's a completely different story. You all know I said it a little bit earlier. I prefer the endgame one. Next up, here we have Taskmaster from the same line, and she's way taller. She's a significantly bigger figure, because, spoiler alert, she's on a male body. Now, I personally don't mind this. I like the way this looks. These two pose up together is going to be awesome. Unfortunately, though, Hot Toys, what the hell? Why aren't you making Red Guardian? You could have also thrown in a Melina head sculpt to pop on this body, kind of like a bonus, here's an additional character type thing, but no, no, they kept it simple, and this line, super trim. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a rubbery neck and a double ball peg, looking forward to there. Looking back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms do go up to there. Going forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, going past 90, plus a shrunk down female 1 6 scale wrist peg. The torso crunches forward to there, going back to there, swivel and pivot. The legs will go forward to there, the holsters do fight you just a little. Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee, going past 90, then lastly a split cut boot design with a hinge and swivel for the ankle. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing, and I so thought this was going to be a cool thing, but it's the split cut boot design, it doesn't really work all that well. They've gone with a hinge and swivel, basically a massive wrist peg for the ankle. They've done that for Wonder Woman and Harley Quinn, but I was hoping for a double ball peg. What's the difference I hear you ask? Well, when it comes to ankle pivot and going forward and back, you can only have one or the other. That means if you want it to go from side to side, you need to rotate the joint inside the ankle, then you can move side to side. If you want it to go forward and back, you have to rotate that joint again, and it'll hinge in that direction. The second annoying thing might be a minor one or a major one, depending on your personal preference, but it's the wrist peg color. Why is it skin tone? These wrist pegs should have been black to blend in with the suit and the gloves. 
that when you bend them in and they poke out from underneath the gauntlets, they're really visible. The third annoying thing is that the holsters aren't actually all that secure. When you start posing her, they're kind of loosey-goosey, so the guns do tend to fall out if you get a little bit too crazy with your posing. And get crazy you can, because the first cool thing is all the spandex. There is a ton of it. That means that all the high traffic areas, such as the elbows, the shoulders, the legs, it's stretchy spandex, so fingers crossed it not only moves well, but it should hold up over time. The second cool thing is the rubbery neck. Hot Toys were experimenting and trying things out, but I don't think I've ever seen a rubbery neck afford this much range of motion. That's insane. Going back, it is a little bit more limited thanks to the hair, but in my opinion, that's still more than serviceable. The third cool thing is that the batons are on ball joints, not just straight pegs. So from the front, you can move them left and right, forward and back. And depending on where you put them, you can change her silhouette. Wrapping up on the Hot Toys solo movie Black Widow. Going into this video, I was pretty excited. I'm a fan of Black Widow. I love ScarJo. Huge fan of the movie. I know, not everyone is, but... I don't care. Sue me. I love the film. It's just my cup of tea. This figure, though, I don't think is going to be as controversial as the film this look was based off, because she's really good. Starting off with the body, she's got some really strong proportions. It looks like an actual person shrunk down to one six scale. I say that often, but I mean it here. Trust me. When you get this figure in hand and you get her in the right pose, you're going to stand back and say, Damn, she looks so darn real. Because that's exactly what I did, and I don't have any shame in saying that. She comes with a decent array of accessories. The head sculpt might not be as good as the Endgame one, but that was my favorite Black Widow figure of all time. So coming in second best to that figure isn't necessarily a bad thing. The head sculpts are compatible too, so if you wanted to hunt one down and pop it on this figure, you absolutely could. The outfit is made of spandex and rubbery plastic. It not only looks accurate to the movie, but it allows for some decent posability because, as we know, Black Widow is such a poser. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I popped the link down in the description below. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.